dramas and other creatures. In this video, we're going to take a look on a rather glorious day in London at the groove that the lovely Chris Layton played on Couldn't Stand the Weather by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, this is following a request from somebody who viewed one of the other videos I made about a Chris Layton thingy. I can't remember which now. Um, what I'm thinking we're going to focus on is the bits uh, that are played the groove that's played on the intro and the riffy bits of the song. Sounds something like this. Why do I go through that with the crash? There's not even any crash in the rest of the things I'm going to show you. It's a good habit, though. All right, so let's see what we're looking at here. It's a kind of funky groove. Um, we're playing mostly eighth notes on the hi-hat, although there's some sixteenths that get thrown in. And uh, the same thing that I'm going to show you just on the hi-hat in this video, uh, you can also work out on the ride, and, and that applies to various other parts of the song. But we've got a two-bar phrase with, let's look at the hand pattern first, uh, and then we'll look at the, the bass drum stuff separately. Um, maybe we'll, we'll start off just with the eights on the hi-hat, then we'll look at the bass drum, then we'll add the hi-hat sixteenths, just to... There's method to the madness, don't worry. Anyway. The snare drum pattern here uh, that goes with the eights is something like this, or it's like this. Um, I'm going to click my sticks to demonstrate the count. We've got one and two and three e and four and one e and two and three e and four and. That was it, I almost missed a bit. So basically we're playing the snare on the two, the e of three and the four in the first bar, and then the e of one, uh, the two, the e of three and the e of four. Um, in the, and the four rather, sorry, in the second bar. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to provide a PDF of all of this so you can watch me rambling on uh, and you can also refer with your eyes to a downloadable sheet um, in the description box below, of course. So let's review that again. One and two and... Mm, that's too loud. One and two and three e and four and one e and two and three e and four and one and two and three e and four and one e and two, three e and four and. Okay, I'm trying to control how loudly I hit the sticks because it makes horrible peaks in the uh, the vocal mic. Anyway, that's our pattern we're going to play this and it sounds to me like Chris Layton's mostly going for rim shots in all of that stuff so they're, they're all accented notes the ones that I counted so something like this if you're not at ease playing rim shots it's okay just play a nice solid backbeat So that's, uh, that's the first part of our groove. Now, in the bass drum department, we're, we're going to play regularly on the one of every two-bar phrase. So at the very beginning of our two-bar cycle, we're going to hit the bass on the one. And from there, there's quite a lot of variation in the bass drum stuff. So I don't know, I would kind of define uh, a bass line groove, sorry, pardon, pardon the pun, uh, but it, it's... It's all moving, right? So just to give us something to work on, let's play the following thing. I'm just going to play the bass line. I'm going to explain what I, I did. Um, and then I'll show you how to sort of think of a 
few angles about how to vary it, right? And I'm, I'm not giving you an exact prescription of what to do. Um, the, the object of the exercise is to get one bass drum pattern that works for you, but then to learn how to move it about. So let's see, what am I doing here? So that's the kind of the, the essence of the thing as I hear it. I've listened to the song hundreds of times. There's probably no two two bar phrases exactly the same, but we've got this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I've kind of gone for the bass on the one and the and, then the and of three, the and of one again, um, and the and of three again, right? There's probably some genius way to be able to count so you can hear me, but okay, you get that, okay? Bass on the one, and of one, uh, and of three, and of one, and of three. Now, how do we vary this? How do we sort of teach our body to be able to play the hand pattern consistently, but change the bass drum pattern? Thing number one, the principle here is really playing the bass drum on the ands. Uh, so apart from the one at the beginning of our two bar phrase, we're gonna play the bass only on ands in the rest of the groove. I don't know if 100% of the time uh, Chris Layton is observing that rule as it were, but um, by and large that seems to, to be the essence of the thing. So for example, what could we do? We could play the bass on the one and the and as a kind of default setting. So we've got that boom, boom at the beginning. Again, in the song, that's not happening all the time, but just, just for us to have a place to stand, one and and. And then we could try and call out some different possibilities for other ands to play. So for example, let me play the one and the and, and then the and of four, on the first bar, the and of four on the second bar. So something like this. Okay, now, you could change that entirely, or you could take that same thing, playing both of the forehands, as I would call them, um, and let's now bring in the and of three on the second bar. That's all we're gonna change. Let's go this time, instead of that and of three in the second bar, we'll do the and of two. Keep everything else the same. One, one and, and of four, and of two, and of four. Here we go. Okay, so far so good. Let's move the and of two to the first bar. So we're gonna not play the and of two in the second bar, but we will play the and of two in the first bar. Here we go. Okay, 
Let's drop the and of four from the first bar, but we'll play the and of one on the second bar. So we'll go one, one and, two and, then one and, four and, like this. Don't worry, you might not be able to follow this. As I say, I'll put all of these variations into a PDF so you can read along. I don't really like the idea of making a video with the, the music bobbing along at the bottom for some reason. I've got an allergy to it, so look, look at the sheet, like in the olden days. Here we go. What was it I said? One, and of one, and of two, and of one, and of four. Here we go. And so on and so on. There's quite a lot of possibilities from playing all the ands to playing no ands at all. You could just play the bass on the one, see how that feels. Now, once you've experimented with a whole bunch of bass drum variations there, all you need to do is test yourself. So you sit, have a nice practice session, play this idea for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, three hours, whatever you fancy. Play it until you think, okay, I've tried a whole bunch of variations here. Uh, you can use your brain, or you can you can look at a sheet. I'm, I'm going to talk about a sheet too much now. Um, have a go. At the end of the period of practice, then you're going to try improvising, right? This is a really important part of the process. Whatever you've practiced, you're then going to try improvising. And maybe when you first start out with this, it's not going to come out that well. Maybe uh, you feel blocked, or you don't feel that it's easy to just move around the bass drum notes, but keeping the hand pattern going. You might have to try this quite a lot before it starts coming out right. And this is something I like to point out as often as I can. Hopefully it's not boring of me, but we YouTube drummers, or I'm sure this is other musicians as well, we're making a video, we're trying to make it, I'm hoping this isn't more than 15 minutes, but it takes more than 15 minutes to get these things right very often. Sometimes you'll, you'll be lucky and you can just do a thing that someone's shown you, but anywho, bear that in mind. So let's improvise a little bit. I'm gonna change the bass drum pattern and try and be a little bit spontaneous about it. Um, remember that if these things are crap, basically, when you try and play it, if it doesn't work out, that's all fine. That's all part of the learning process and your brain is making its little adjustments and so on that will allow you to do this in due course. Here we go. Then stick it on, play along to the track, and see how that feels. Now, let's move on to the next detail. Back to the hands. In this, again, it's not played entirely consistently throughout, but there is a um, sort of 16th note element to the hi-hat, which involves doubling up your hi-hat notes, uh, and it happens on the three E and uh, so it's sort of and of three and of one kind of thing. So let me do this now. I'll, I'll do it without the bass drum, but we've got something like, oh, do you know what? I'll do it without this now. I'll just play on the hi-hat. Let's see if I can do this quietly enough so that I can count and play the hi-hat at the same time without giving me red lights on my microphones. So we've got... In the context of the groove, we get... Getting the hang of that, I would try and do it consistently, uh, meaning play it 
all the time in a regular pattern, uh, which means we'll be playing in the first bar three Anna, and then one Anna in the second bar, and three Anna in the second bar as well. Um, and when you get the hang of that, then try improvising with dropping that in and out. Um, now, the action of this whole thing, uh, if you haven't like spent a load of time working on playing what I'd call a straight string, uh, straight string, straight swing, which is a, an eighth and two sixteenths, is you might need to focus on the three E and R uh, process on its own to try and get the hang of it. Three E and a four even. And then try and maybe add the bass just on the one. And so on. I'm having that thing where when you do something really slowly, it doesn't come out right. Um, but, you know, just break down the whole 3 E Anna, 3 E Anna 4, and practice doing that on its own before kind of trying to string that together. This time I mean string, uh, string it together in the whole groove context. and then you can try and turn that back into your two bar phrase. And this time, you know, once you're comfortable with it, bring those sixteenths in and out spontaneously. And play slowly and see if sometimes you can play with the little extra sixteenths and sometimes without. I hope that makes sense. Check the sheet out if you can't follow it. Okay. The last thing is we get a few ghost notes happening. Uh, when we're playing the, the E's there after the one and the three, um, that's a kind of place where very often you'd have a ghost note in a groove rather than an accented note. So you might have something like... be a bit more like that. Um, but obviously that space is taken up with a, an accented note. But on sometimes you can play the one E as a ghosted note, just to vary things a little bit. But also the two R uh, is ghost notable, or the four R. Um, so you can experiment with adding a little ghost note there. Something like this. And that's it. I think that covers the essence of what that groove is about. Work on getting each of those components together, the basic eighth note pattern with the snare drum on hi-hat, hi-hat and snare basically. Add the bass drum notes and work out how to play some variations on the ands, moving the bass drum pattern around and, and just being playful with it if you like. And remember, you can do some dense bass drum stuff and some sparse bass drum stuff, it all fits there. Then add the 16th notes to the hi-hat and learn how to play consistently, but then, you know, learn how to drop them in and out spontaneously with all the other stuff going on. And finally, just adding occasional ghost notes whenever you feel like it. And 
that more or less wraps that up. That's that's the the interesting part. Of the, sorry, no disrespect to Mr. Layton. You know, that's the the novel part of the groove that you want to learn. The other parts of the song a little bit more straightforward, I guess. Uh, some of it is the hand pattern played between the ride and the snare and the bass drum. So once you know how to do the hi-hat thing, move over to the ride and uh, replicate the same thing. Um, and that, that should give you all the ingredients that you need to be able to play this song well. Now, in the event that you haven't got it together to play those 16th notes yet, don't worry about it at all. The groove will still sound good with just eighth notes on the hi-hat, but otherwise, I think it's quite a manageable groove for most people, uh, even in the earlier stages of things, I would say. Um, and that more or less wraps that up for today. Thank you very much for watching this. If you did, um, let me know what you thought of this video. If you've learned how to play this song or anything else from any of my videos, I'm very interested to hear about it. And uh, I welcome any comments for good or ill in the comment box. It all helps the cause. Um, and I guess that's that. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to be updated with further videos, although I'm not sure if I'm really supposed to say that or not. Meanwhile, time for you to get off and practice.